Welcome everyone. My name is Mac Dodds. I am the construction industry council lead over at West Michigan Works. Um, today uh, we will be doing an industry 101 session um, based around the great career choice of construction. Um, just a couple housekeeping items. We want this to be as interactive as possible. So um, if there are any questions that you have, you can throw them in the chat box. Also, um, any questions that I may ask you, I would love if you guys could answer and throw those in the chat box as well. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna play a little bit uh, of a game later on and I want you guys to be um, as responsive as possible and throw those answers in there and have a little fun with it. So um, the whole point of this today is to just give um, everyone information on the industry that's out there, um, what, <clears throat> what, steps you can take to gain um, employment in the industry, and also some information that might help you along the way. Uh, my goal here is just to make you aware of everything that construction has to offer. I think it's a great field. Um, we're gonna touch on a lot of different things today, um, and I'm excited to get started. Uh, lastly, um, following the presentation, if you have any questions or would like to speak to me personally, um, we'll have my contact information sent out and we can touch base and talk about whatever that you would like to talk about when it comes to the industry. So without further ado, um, how about we get started with this construction presentation? So um, here's our agenda for today. We're just going to go over some basic things. So uh, we'll do an introduction again and, and I'll let you know a little bit about my story um, and how I got into this and became passionate about construction. Um, after that, we'll be doing a little salary game. Uh, this game is kind of like the price is right. So um, we'll, we'll look at different occupations and what you guys think they might make um, and compare it to what they actually make. Uh, next, after that, we'll look at different options. So your entry level, your apprenticeships, and then also uh, your college degree on how to, uh, again, gain entry into the, into the field. And then lastly, we'll have some uh, panel questions that we've pre-recorded. And um, I think that our employers that we, we interviewed gave great answers. And um, I'm really excited for you guys to kind of see um, from the actual professionals in the field right now, you know, how they think and feel about the industry. So um, here's a little bit about myself. Um, coming out of high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I think that that is the case for a lot more people than um, is what is given credit for. Um, so <clears throat> I went to Grand Valley my freshman year. At that time, I was an accounting major. Um, and then I transferred over to Michigan State. I actually um, stayed there for, for three more years to finish out my degree. I got my degree in advertising. Um, and after school, um, you know, I, I had a job already lined up coming out of, of college, I'm working for an insurance agency. Uh, I know not the, the sexiest job in the world, but, um, I was excited about it. And then again, I just didn't know exactly which point, um, I wanted to be at yet. Uh, I always told myself that I want to at least try to become GM of the Tigers. So I took a, uh, Baseball operations internship for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Got to do some really cool stuff there. And then this is when it really turned for me. Um, after the Diamondbacks experience, I realized that I need something a little bit more um, stronger, um, a little bit more grounded, and, and something that I could really sink my teeth into. And I ended up um, applying for an earth moving company. So making sure that all the sites are to level ground so that you can build buildings on top of them. Um, once I got there, I was immediately hooked. I, I was not aware of all the certain things that go into construction and it completely changed my mindset on the field. So um, while I was there, I was a takeoff specialist and a quantity estimator. So I think you'll see later on as we go over misconceptions in the construction field, what these people do um, or takeoffs and your quantity estimators is you look at blueprints of what jobs are gonna be out there um, you take the pre-existing conditions of that area. So let's say a, a chunk of woods um, is going to be a job site. What I do is figure out how much um, ground is there, how much is needed for, for the actual job, all on the computer, and actually figure out exactly what the quantities are. And then I send those numbers up the ladder so we can make an accurate bid 
based on our quantities. So um, it was just very interesting. I thought that coming into it, I would be, you know, out on the job sites, um, getting muddy, long, long days. And it was actually the exact opposite. I was in the office. I was working from um, eight to five every single day, um, looking at blueprints, learning um, the ins and outs of the industry. And I think that that was when I first realized that, okay, there's a lot more to this field than what I actually realized. Um, from there, I made the decision to move out to West Michigan and I got a job with West Michigan Works where I became the construction industry lead. And um, I still stay very passionate about uh, the construction industry now and uh, working in it, I understand a lot more about how it works and um, all the opportunities in it. So my job here with West Michigan Works is to just give you um, as much information and just make you at least think about um, learning more about the industry. <clears throat> so as we move on, I think an important question to ask is, you know, what is construction? Um, I think this would be a great time for you to um, put something in the chat box, you know, tell us what you think construction is. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll go back and we'll look and see if that, that mindset about what construction is has changed. So um, there's a lot that goes into construction. There's lots of different types of construction. If you look just on this picture of this job site, there are 20, 30 different things going on at once. And just seeing the project come from the base up is, is really, really cool to see. Um, you know, people that are working on this job just right here uh, will be driving down the road. Um, later when it's completed and they'll say, you know, I helped build that. And I think that's um, something that's really cool about the construction industry. So um, just getting into some misconceptions right here. Um, you know, <clears throat> there's a lot of misconceptions in the industry. I will be honest and say one of, one of mine was that, you know, construction is dirty or construction is for, you know, someone who's not smart or whatever that may be. And, just on here, construction careers are not for, for women. Construction work is dirty. There's no place for tech or innovation in construction. You see all these things and they're up here as misconceptions for a reason because that's not true. There's plenty of careers that um, women can do in construction. There's plenty of careers in construction that aren't dirty. There's clearly place for innovation in tech and construction. And it's very, very interesting to see all the technology that is being built and um, provided to these construction companies to use and better understand, you know, the work that they're doing, becoming more efficient. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that if you hear about the industry, you might want to just double check to make sure it's true because these ones are just some examples of what people believe construction is, um, but actually isn't. So um, before we move on to the next one, another misconception is that, you can't make a lot of money in construction. So we're actually going to play a little game, and that is not true. So um, this is a part where I really want you to be interactive here. Um, we're just going to look at <clears throat> some data that we've pulled from West Michigan, and these are going to be median salary ranges um, across West Michigan. And then we're going to go into, you know, what exactly um, it takes to become um, one of these um, – become in one of these positions. So the first one, um, on average, what do you think a construction manager makes per year, median salary? So go ahead and throw those in the chat box right now and um, we'll continue to, to do this throughout uh, this slide. So a construction manager actually has a median salary of $84,614 and that's in West Michigan. So that means that that's in the middle. <clears throat> that means that there's construction managers making more, maybe a little bit less, but construction manager, going back to those misconceptions, construction manager, well, the work is dirty. Well, technically when it comes to a construction manager, they're looking at, you know, the project as a whole, they're uh, managing the construction of the project. So these people actually spend most of their time in the office. Um, construction managers uh, to become a construction manager, you can get a, four-year degree. You can go to a community college to get, let's say, a degree in civil engineering, um, an associate's degree. 
or you can learn on the job. You can start as an entry level person, work your way up to a construction manager with all that on the job experience. And you're looking at $84,000. Um, I don't know about you, but I think that's an extremely livable and comfortable wage to be at and is a great career path. Um, so if you're someone who likes to manage projects or, you know, just put things together, even if it's birthday party or meeting someone at the beach or whatever it may be, but you enjoy putting everything into motion, this might be a good um, job for you. So here's one that's a little bit different. What about an elevator installer? So throw what you think uh, an elevator installer makes into the chat uh, before we pop these up. So an elevator installer, um, while you guys are getting those answers in there, I'll just tell you a little bit about them. Uh, this is actually somewhere where you can start as an entry level job. Uh, you can either be an entry level job and learn on the job, or I believe there's an apprenticeship for this. So <clears throat> elevator installer, you think, well, I mean, how many people are doing that? And that is actually a great reason to get into it. This is a growing um, industry. And actually, if you take a look, they make $81,887 um, as a median. So again, really good money. And I think the training for an elevator installer um, is about two years of on the job experience. So if you think about that, if you're maybe undecided on, hey, should I go to college for four years? Maybe you take out a couple of loans to pay for that, or do I go and learn how to do this as an elevator installer and make a whole bunch of money um, debt free? So <clears throat> moving on to the next one, how about a civil engineer? So again, um, put your answers in the chat. Just uh, just a fun game to play to see, you know, um, the differences in what you guys think that they might make compared to what they actually make. So civil engineer, um, same type of thing. They offer, they do offer um, two-year programs. I think um, community colleges do that, and then they also offer four-year programs to become a civil engineer. Um, a lot of the times you can take a civil engineering degree and become uh, a construction manager or a project manager or like here, a civil engineer. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. Um, okay, great. So we got all those answers in there. So what do we think the median is? The median for a civil engineer is $65,625. So again, that's two years of schooling and you're making really, really good money, um, you know, at a young age, or um, if you want something new, you're making really good money uh, as soon as you're done with your training. So um, moving on to the next one, I think everyone should know, um, or at least have an idea of what electricians are. So why don't you throw your um, guess into the median salary there. Uh, a little bit about electricians is there's a lot of different ways to get into it. There's a lot of different things and paths you can go. Um, but electricians are typically uh, you're going to be a part of an apprenticeship. Uh, we'll talk more about apprenticeships coming up, but um, apprenticeships are a combination of on-the-job training along with schooling um, that the employer helps pay for. So um, really, uh, you're learning um, how to do your job while you're getting paid for it. So uh, another great option. You know, electricians once they hit a certain amount of time that they've, they've been on the job, they become a, jour a journeyman electrician. And then um, once you hit the second uh, stepping stone after that, you become a master electrician. And then, um, you know, we did an employer panel and I think our employer panel did a great job of saying, you know, master electricians, the world is kind of yours. You're, you're, you can kind of go whichever way you want. Um, another cool thing about construction um, is you may see electrician. Well, you can do a lot of different things as an electrician. You can go um, into buildings, which is called commercial construction. You can go into people's houses and rewire their house, and that's called residential construction. So there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do um, within each one of these, these career paths. So uh, with that being said, let's take a look. And now remember, these are median salaries. So this is just for an electrician. Um, this is not for a master or an entry-level electrician. This is uh, median for that. So just keep that in mind. So that's starting about $53,000. Um, and like I said, the longer that you do it, the more you get paid um, and the more that you can, you can move on up. You know, if you've always wanted to own your own business, but 
you still wanted to use your hands on a day-to-day -day basis, the electrician would be a perfect job for you. Um, so now kind of shifting gears, um, just so um, everyone here is, is aware of, you know, what else is out there, okay? So um, I picked three of the, the most growing, um, growing occupations in other industries, and uh, I actually added them in here just so you could compare. And again, this is just for your awareness. So how about a home health aid? If you could just throw those answers into the chat on what you think a home health aid might um, might have as a median salary. And again, <clears throat> these are three of the highest growing uh, positions in West Michigan. So people are, are looking to do this. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. All we're here is just to kind of give you a comparison of what those median salaries might, <clears throat> how they might differentiate. So um, home health aid, uh, looks like we got those answers in the chat. Their median salary is $25,455. So again, this is not to discourage anybody from being a home health aide, um, but there is a little bit of schooling involved there. Um, and just to clarify, you can go and become an electrician, get your training paid for, get your classrooms paid for, and be making $53,000. Um, you know, with that, when you're starting out, that is a great wage. You can start uh, looking at houses or cars or whatever you need uh, to have a good, comfortable life. Um, that's also a great option. So what about a uh, graphic designer? So this can be somebody in IT or marketing, advertising, whatever it may be. This is also a huge growing field that a lot of people want to do. Um, so this may be for, you know, those artistic folks that, you know, have that, that knack to um, be creative and they're going into this graphic design school and what, whatever it may be. So again, let's get those answers in there. And while those answers are coming in, um, here's a good one just as an example. So let's say you're artistic, you're creative, you like to um, do all that type of stuff. So you think about being a graphic designer. Well, um, this is like a great comparable occupation. So what about an architect? Um, you know, someone who, likes to design buildings or um, houses or, or blueprints or whatever it may be. Um, this person can do this in the construction field and, um, you know, make a really, really good salary. So, um, so we'll take a look at the graphic designer salary here. And that one is at 47,931. So that's, like I said, a great wage, but also, um, you know, we talked about this graphic designer is great. Um, it's growing, but the, the opportunities may be limited while we still need architects and engineers um, every single day in the construction workforce. So, and then our last one is our paramedics. So um, someone that's got uh, that, that um, wants to be in healthcare, you know, um, wants to have that rush every single day. So what do we think that their median uh, salary in West Michigan is? And this will be the last one. And then after this, we'll actually move on to um, the career pathways and what actually um, are some occupations you can look into if, uh, depending on your, your experience level. So um, this will be our last one. Uh, the paramedic median salary in West Michigan is $43,035. Now, again, this, this slide is only here for you guys to become a little bit more interactive, but also just to give you an idea that, you know, that one of those misconceptions that we were talking about is that, uh, you know, you can't make a whole lot of money in construction. Well, that clearly is not the case. You can make a lot of good money here. So um, like I told you before, I'm just here to make you at least interested in the field and maybe take a second look. So let's move on to our next one. So like I said before, we're going to be start, starting uh, talking about pathways here. Um, there are three pathways um, <clears throat> for the most part when it comes to construction. Uh, there's entry-level apprenticeships and college degrees. Um, but I want to touch on this for a second. So if you look at this little chart that we have here, you'll notice that you can start in high school with no experience whatsoever, and you can still find an arrow that makes it all the way to the senior manager. Right. So 
when it comes to construction, I think that's one of the coolest things about it is you can start as an entry level general laborer and you can be a CEO of the company um, because you have been on the ground and you know exactly how to get things done. Or, you know, you can do a two year program and then you can go work in the field or you can go work in the office and work your way up from there. So I think what's really cool about this specifically, um, this chart is it shows that there are plenty of different ways to navigate your way to the top. And, you know, um, some people don't want to be at the top, you know, some people want to be just a foreman or a superintendent. So there's a lot of different things you can do in this field. Um, and I think that's what makes it uh, such a great field to get into. So our first um, pathway is our entry level pathway. So this is someone with, you know, little to no experience in construction. This is kind of where I felt. Um, I didn't have any experience in it, but um, I still really enjoyed my job and um, I can always go back to that. So here's just some, some jobs that you look at as entry level. So again, these are wages that you start with. And then you look at the, gr the growth rates, meaning that we're going to need more and they're going to become paid more. So um, <clears throat> these are all great right here because they lead to higher wages. Um, they lead to you being able to move up in the company. So Carpenter, for example, you'll do your on the job and then <clears throat> you can do an apprenticeship with that and own your own um, business if you want to do that. Equipment operator, you can take that skill, learn it on the job and then move, move on up, um, literally and figuratively, uh, when it comes to the size of the equipment, right? So um, <clears throat> equipment operator is a great job. There's always a need for those. Um, <clears throat> and so like, if you like to drive big trucks or something like that, I think that's something that'd be great for you to um, look into. Here's one that's very interesting to me, and it's uh, the solar installer. So, um, this is specifically at houses um, in the future that are, want um, those solar panels on them. They need people to install them, and right now uh, there's not a lot. So you'll see that this growth rate is at 36%. And again, this is in West Michigan that um, these <clears throat> solar panel installers can go in there, learn on the job, and eventually um, work their way up to uh, a point where <clears throat> they have a stranglehold on the market. So um, this again is an entry level job that can lead um, to extremely high wages with experience. And then you have your heating and air conditioning installers. Um, again, this is a job that you can get with no, little to no experience and you can learn on the job. So you're getting paid while you're learning how to do it. Um, I don't know if there's a much better way to go about that. So. These are just four examples. Again, um, if you have any questions about any of these or want a list of, you know, some entry level jobs that might be available with high growth rates, um, you can certainly reach out to me. So just um, keep that in mind here. So moving on, um, we're going to look at apprenticeships now. And <clears throat> apprenticeships can be kind of tricky um, because there's so much information. So we have our bullets right here, which makes uh, or reasons why we think apprenticeships are, are great. Uh, the training is specific to your role. So that means that you're going to be learning exactly what you're going to be doing on a day to day basis. Right. So this isn't like a school where you have no interest in history class and you're probably never going to use it again and you have to learn about it um, here. Everything that you learn on a day to day basis is something that you could uh, use down the road. So on top of that, while you're just learning how to do these things, you're getting paid to do it. So an apprenticeship is a great opportunity. Um, typically it's debt free when it comes to um, the employer and you can learn um, why you earn. <clears throat> um, the apprenticeship typically combines classroom training and on the job training. So on top of learning how to do the job, uh, physically do the job with your hands and learning how to do it. Um, you'll also have the opportunity to go to class. It depends on the employer or the training program, but typically you'll go once or twice a week. Um, that'll be your shift for the day, or maybe you'll go after your shift um, and you'll be paid for that. And then also 
uh, you know, once you you complete your apprenticeship program, you have moved up. And usually this leads to full-time employment. Um, you can become a journeyman electrician or journeyman iron worker, whatever it may be down the road. So um, I think in summary, the best things about the apprenticeship is you get a combination of on the job and classroom training and you're being paid for it at the same time. So um, if you're interested at all, say, you know what, school is not really my thing, but I, I wouldn't mind learning something specifically. An apprenticeship would be a great program for you to look into. So here's just some apprenticeship uh, opportunities where you start. So you got your electricians, which we talked about before. Um, one of our employers in the employer panel is actually the training provider for electricians in apprenticeships, and he'll touch on you know, the career path. So when it comes to electricians, if uh, you're somebody that likes to use your hands, um, if you're somebody that likes to figure out, you know, the root of the problem or how something works um, or how to wire something, you're a problem solver, uh, this is a great field for you. That goes back to the elevator installers, which we were talking about earlier. Same type of thing. You could be making $80,000 after two or three years of training. Um, if you would have told me that in high school, I would have probably been an elevator installer by now. So um, that's the same type of thing where, you know, you're building stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. Every problem might be a little bit different. Uh, that's why this field is so great and that occupation specifically. Your plumbers, your pipe fitters, and your steam fitter, steam fitters, and your boiler makers are just more examples of apprenticeships. So um, I think what's good to, to say is, when we asked that question, what is construction earlier? Construction is a multitude of different things. So plumbers, pipe fitters, steam fitters, boiler makers, electricians, they're all different, but they're all considered in the construction field. So I think if you're interested about apprenticeships, you know, look into which one of these you'd like to do. There's plenty more, um, but <clears throat> if the, any of these you go, man, elevator and solar, oh, I like the cash. I, I like uh, the do things with my hands. I like to problem solve. I wonder what that would be like, you know, look into it. Um, and there's plenty of programs, plenty of training providers, plenty of employers in West Michigan that are always looking for uh, new apprentices to bring out. So the last one we'll touch on is your college degree when it comes to construction. Uh, again, uh, that was kind of the misconception that I had coming out of high school is that you didn't need a degree to work in construction. And you don't, um, but there are also jobs that, uh, you know, require a college degree in the construction field. So um, you have a variety of jobs uh, with, the, with the college degree. Um, you'll be paid competitively. Um, you'll have a lot of internship possibilities, uh, leadership opportunities. Um, everything that I've heard about the internship programs um, when it comes to construction management or civil engineering degrees. Um, have been really immersive. Uh, you get to be on the job site a lot. You get to work with your project managers and see um, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, what it actually entails. So um, college degree, great option. Um, here are some options that uh, you can get with that degree. So your construction manager, again, this is someone that is going to make sure that the project goes smoothly uh, from start to finish. So construction manager is a really good job if if you're a planner, um, either that's event or just in general, uh, you like to keep things organized and running smoothly. Um, you like to think on your feet. Sometimes there's going to be a problem in the morning that you need to figure out. Uh, construction manager would be a great job for you. Civil engineer, this is people that um, figure out, that are a lot smarter than me, that figure out uh, how the ground needs to be worked uh, in order to make sure that the building is safe. Um, another great degree that you can use. Um, not You can get a civil engineering degree. Um, you can become a civil engineer. You can also become a construction manager. Um, a lot of good things that you can do with this. Uh, architect, you know, we, we were talking about that earlier. Uh, if you're someone who likes to, you know, drop your dream home all the time or say, you know, this would look good here or uh, this house would have better, look better with tall ceilings or Sometimes you walk by and say, that's a really cool building. I wonder who, who uh, designed that. This might be a job for you. Um, 
So if you have that creative mind, uh, that artistic and uh, savvy thought process, architect is something you might want to look into. And then field superintendent. This is what's really cool about that this job specifically combines all three of the entry points that we talked about. So field superintendent, you can get it as an entry level person. So you can actually work your way up, prove yourself that you know how a job site is supposed to run. Uh, you get your projects done. You're a reliable employee. Eventually you can work yourself up to become a field superintendent, right? If you know the most, um, you're going to be promoted up there. An apprenticeship, same type of thing. Let's say you learn on the job and you're under <coughs> your, your superintendent is the one that's training you and you get to learn firsthand from him. So you have that experience and then down the road, uh, you have that opportunity. You could be a field superintendent. So, um, and then of course your college degree, uh, same type of thing. You become a construction manager, you do that for a while. You understand the ins and outs of the job site and the management of a project. And then you eventually work your way up to field superintendent. So just to reiterate, um, there's plenty of different entry points to get into into the construction field. There's so many different ways and jobs and different opportunities you can you can really grasp from just doing your research on all this stuff. So, um, you know, the college degree, there's some big numbers there, um, but it doesn't mean that you have to get a degree to, to become a superintendent like we were talking about. So um, lots of, lots of great ways and opportunities uh, to work your way up. And these are, these are very um, interesting and cool jobs, I think. So um, we just got a couple slides left, but um, just to summarize, you know, why work in construction? Um, you know, uh, you can clearly see from everything that we talked about, you can earn a great living. Um, those growth rates with the high demand, and again, these are all in West Michigan, so they're only going to um, get higher. Um, your work is going to be different every single day. Um, you can be outside. Let's say you like to be outside. Let's say you like you're a math wizard and you like to be outside, you might want to be um, someone on a job site as a foreman or something like that. Um, you know, our next bullet point is you're providing real solutions. Um, so let's say you work for a company and you guys built a hospital, you know, you could <laughs> down the road be either driving and say, yeah, I built that. Or it could be the hospital that uh, saves your life or maybe, um, your first child is born at that hospital and you were the one that put that on the ground. So it's very um, rewarding in that sense. Uh, on top of that, these skills that you learn day, day in and day out are stuff that you can take home with you. You can, you can teach your kids. You can work on projects at, at your house. Um, and there's just a multitude of different skilled trades different occupations that you can do. The opportunities are endless in this construction field. And then lastly, it's just the unlimited potential. Um, I think that one of the really cool things about this is you, this field is you can start, like I said, in entry level apprenticeship, college degree, and everybody can end up at the top of the mountain. Um, so I I encourage you to give construction a valid look. I think that there's a lot of different things you can do in it. And there's a lot of real world um, comparable things that you might, <clears throat> you might not realize. So for example, I used to love to build sandcastles when I was a kid, you know, I always wanted the biggest sandcastle. Well, looking back, maybe I did have a construction mind early. So um, you know, I think I made a lot of kind of examples of what you might like. Like if you like graphic designing, you might be a good architect. Or if you like event planning, you might be a good construction manager. So just take a look. Um, you can make plenty of money in this industry. You can really enjoy your life. Um, and you can provide real solutions to, to everyone. So, um, again, I encourage you to to give it a, a fair shake and 
um, hopefully that this helped you out and at least raise your interest a little bit. So uh, without further ado, we'll, we'll uh, have some questions here. So if you have any questions at all, make sure to send them in the chat. Um, if Samantha can't answer those questions for you, I will individually reach out to you to make sure that all those questions are answered. Um, even if you want to set up a meeting and just talk to me more about, you know, how do I get into this? Uh, you know, what are some good ways to, to uh, get going or what should I learn before I, before I go into the field? Um, just let me know and I can sit down and talk with you and make sure that uh, you're prepared and um, figure out if this is the field for you. It may not be for everybody, but um, I just hope that I helped at least uh, pique your interest a little bit. And um, I, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to, to go through this um, presentation. It's always a little weird doing a presentation by yourself. But uh, again, I hope that uh, you look at construction as a uh, viable option in your future um, because we need you. And uh, I really hope that um, all of you are successful no matter what you do. So thank you and have a good day. Welcome to the employer panel, uh, part of this discussion. Uh, we're excited to have everybody here today. Um, we have a great employer here, um, also a training provider for apprenticeships in the unions. Um, his name is Jeff Yonkers. Um, he's going to be here to help us answer any questions that we might um, have seen in the past that have been some of those questions that you might ask when, when picking a career in the construction field. Um, so hopefully we can answer some of those questions that you may have. Um, and then also, if you have any other questions, feel free um, to reach out to either one of us and we'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Um, you know, we, we truly, truly believe, I think um, Jeff and I definitely share this, that um, the construction field is a great industry to get into. There's a lot of different things that you can do. And um, we're excited to talk about that today. So, um, Jeff, without further ado, how about you introduce yourself for us? Um, I work for the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, uh, local Union 275. Um, we represent electricians in the West Michigan area, and uh, our purpose is basically we inside construction work, which is everything from uh, residential housing all the way up to um, big uh, industrial settings, powerhouses, things like that. Yeah. No, that's great. So um, before we jump into anything, um, why don't you tell us about your role um, with IBEW and then also, um, you know, what a union actually is. I think some people um, aren't really sure, you know, what the union does or what you guys do. So why don't you just go into what you do and what the union does overall? That's a really good question, uh, Mac, because we get asked that quite a bit. Um, so uh, basically my role here um, with the IEW is what they refer to as members development. Um, so it's kind of a really fancy term for organizer or recruiter. Um, I go to um, schools and trade things and, um, you know, different skill centers and things like that. Talk to the kids there about, uh, you know, their interest in the electrical industry and construction in general. And then I also uh, talk to those that are uh, working in the electrical industry already um, who may be working for uh, companies that are, that are not union, um, commonly referred to as non-union. Um, the biggest and easiest uh, way to explain what a union is is um, the, the only difference between a union and a non-union employer is a, is a contract, a collective bargaining agreement. Um, basically, we have it laid out uh, in black and white what's expected of our, of, of our guys. And, um, you know, it does change unless there's any changes made to those contracts during the contract negotiations. Um, but other than that, I, you know, we, we all do the same work. We, we all pipe, we pull wire, we terminate, do everything pretty much the same. Um, you know, the, the, the only big difference is that contract. No, that's great. Um, <laughs> I mean, just the difference between that, I think that's one thing that you might want to look into um, before hopping into the field is if you want to work for um, a unionized employer or, or not. So um, that's definitely um, good information there. So um, now that we've got that out of the way, kind of determining the union stuff, um, you know, one of the questions that we have is just, you know, what's your favorite part of your job in the construction? So like specifically when it comes to construction, what's your favorite part there, Jeff? 
So, so Mac, I, I kind of had a little bit of an oddball path. Um, I went to college, um, got out of high school, figured out that it was not for me. And so then um, I, I went and I worked, I started in construction. And what I realized was um, I kind of have a little bit of a gypsy soul, right? I, I like the change of pace, I'm seeing the different views. Yeah. And for me to watch something go from a big pile of dirt into like this massive 100,000 square foot facility, they're producing something or, you know, they're, they're taking packages all, you know, in a matter of six, eight months. Um, to me, it's just, a, it's a wonder. Um, and that for me is probably my favorite part is just the fact that the, the view is never the same. Um, you know, I'm not stuck in an, in an office cubicle every day looking at the same four walls. I can go out and I've seen some gorgeous sunsets. On, the, on, on Lake Michigan while working, I've seen some gorgeous sunrises um, while working. So um, that, that to me is probably my favorite part. It's just the, the change of scenery that you consistently get with construction. Yeah, and I think that that is extremely well put. Um, the opportunity, I, I think that's one thing, is the opportunity to kind of move around and do something different every single day. Um, yes. it keeps you, it keeps you on your feet and, um, it's definitely a pro, um, to, to the work. So just building off that, I want to ask you, you know, what does, what does construction mean to you then? I know you're talking about, you know, your hundred thousand square foot, whatever building or whatever it may be, but what is at the end of the day, is it for you, you know, seeing you go through the work and seeing something built or what is, what does construction mean to you? Well, um, construction to me, um, it, it means a lot of different things. Um, being in Grand Rapids, we are the one of the second, we're the second largest city um, in the state, and you know we're pushing real close on on being you know in that top bunch for the amount of construction work. So to me, it means uh, being able to see all of the new businesses and things that are able to thrive because of um, the ability to to maintain the construction industry here and be able to build those buildings, uh, whether be an apartment, a uh, high rise, uh, a warehouse, something like that, and then basically go from there. But also, it kind of gives you a little bit of a, um, you know, a different perspective when you're able to take your girlfriend or your wife or your kids and you go downtown and you say, you see that building? I helped build that. You know, it's not something that you can do uh, with, with a lot of different jobs is be able to point out that you were part of that building, um, which is kind of interesting, you know? Yeah. And, and just building off of that, I think what's what's cool about construction is, yeah, you can build those big buildings that you were talking about, um, or you become a master electrician and you go into people's houses and, and um, help them figure out and build relationships one on one. So you kind of get to determine: Do I want to work on the big stuff? Do I, you know, want to be a plumber and go into people's houses and help them out? Um, so I think that's something that's really cool too. Um, so the next question we have for you. So let's say somebody is um, thinking about going into construction here, you know, what are, what are what some of the most, if not, you know, just one or two things that, you know, people might want to consider uh, would be important knowing before going into the field. So um, I sit with our apprenticeship committee um, to, to make the decisions on, on guys that come in for apprenticeship. Um, I would say that in, in just about any level of construction, a, a good structure in math is probably needed. Um, you know, math is probably one of those skills that you, you learn in school and you're going, man, am I ever going to use this? <laughs> um, in construction, you're going to use it a lot. Um, yeah. You know, we use it for calculating formulas for, for everything from pipe to wire to loads, um, everything. So, you know, I think that's a really big thing. Um, off of that, I also think, you know, having a little bit of a mechanical ability helps. You know, if you're, if you're one of those, uh, if you're, you know, a kid that likes to go out and change your oil or you like to build things or you like yeah. to tinker or you like to tear it apart and see how it all works. Yeah. Those, are, those are things that actually really help in the construction industry um, is, you know, that, that need or that want to know how this works um, because you're going to learn. You know, and that's it. Um, those would be my two biggest skills that I would say are definitely needed. Um, you know, uh, math is, a, is super important, um, but uh, having a good mechanical set helps out a lot, too. Yeah, I would say that that is a great answer right there. Um, just, you know, have you ever thought like, 
like even if, if you're a kid and you like building sandcastles and seeing, you know, how big can you make it? I think that's, if you think back, you go, Oh man, I did like that when I was a kid. Maybe I'll like building buildings, you know, the real stuff. So I think that is definitely something to hit on. You know, if you want to see how things work um, on top of that, obviously the math is important. Um, and then kind of another question building off that, is there anything in particular that, you know, you had, or you might um, <clears throat> tell someone that is applying for an apprenticeship through your union, um, you know, what might be important or what they might want to look into before heading into the field? Yeah, so that's a that's a really great question. Um, you know, so anytime that we have someone that comes to apply for our apprenticeship, um, you know, we we let them, you know, we give them uh, the the full disclosure up front of what is required. Um, we do have what they call an aptitude test, which tests your level of math and reading abilities, mm-hmm. because we want to make sure that you have a, a decent uh, frame when it comes to that. Um, but you know, I also recommend um, GRCC puts on a really great 18 week course um, where they do um, construction there and they kind of give you a little taste of of everything that's involved but it also helps you out with getting um, some of your stuff like your your OSHA certifications and and learning about some safety and and tools things like that Um, that's always a really good thing and I and I highly recommend it we've had a few of their graduates come in and apply and do really well in our program here Um, I recommend also, you know, um, going out and helping with the, the Habitat for Humanities and the volunteer projects, um, because Absolutely. you know you're you're looking at yeah you're looking at making this a, you know a career you know where you're going to be doing it for five, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Um, you want to make sure this is something that you enjoy. Um, you know, you, the the worst part about going to work is is if you hate your job. Right. Where if you, you're able to get a volunteer opportunity work with working with a Habitat for Humanity or something of that nature, where you can go out and you can test and say, you know, I really enjoyed um, running the, the, the plumbing and stuff like that. Maybe this is something I could look into. Um, that would definitely be another recommendation that I would make. Yeah, that's great. Um, I, think, I think that's perfect. And it also, again, just leads into our next question. So, um, Let's say I'm someone, I say, you know what, Jeff, I I like what you're saying. I'm interested, you know, how do I get started? And then what does a career path look like for me if um, I want to get into the field? I think this is a really, really important question and also great because there's so many different options in construction. So um, you can, you can talk about it however you want, even if it's uh, specific to you guys over, over there, what you guys are doing, but Um, Yeah, let's just say I was coming in the field. What would you tell me? And then what would my career path maybe look like? So um, just about any any career path you take, uh, electrical, mechanical, plumbing, welding, um, iron work, anything like that, um, most of your skilled trades are going to require an apprenticeship. Um, they're going to vary anywhere from, I think the, the shortest one is probably two or three years all the way up to, um, I believe like operating engineers is like a five or six year program. Um, you know, so the, the first step of course is going to be an apprenticeship. Um, most of our apprenticeships here, uh, with, with local 275, our apprenticeships are, are what we call it that free apprenticeship. It's an earn what you learn. So as you're going to school, learning the apprenticeship, you're also working, earning a living. Um, and it's, and it's a lot cheaper cheaper. Um, our total cost for apprenticeship over the, the five-year term is $2,500 versus, uh, you know, you go to community college and you're looking at uh, $2,500 might get you a year's worth, right. not including the books. Um, so, you know, that's something that we definitely pride ourselves on is the, the keeping the low cost for that tuition. Um, but basically after that, um, you get your hours and you are able to test and you become a journeyman, um, whether it be a journeyman uh, pipe fitter, whether it be a journeyman electrician, um, an iron worker, all, all of those trades. Um, journeyman would be the next step. And then after that, it's kind of like, I, I say the world is your oyster, right? <laughs> Every time you open an oyster, it's different, right? So, um, you know, the, it could be that you become a foreman running work. 
uh, for a company. It could be you go into the estimating portion. So you're out there, um, kind of like the guy in your background there, um, looking at the numbers yeah. and estimating yeah. what it's going to look like um, for materials and time and labor and stuff like that. Then there's project managers. Um, project managers are, are guys that, um, or gals that are part of the field that uh, manage not only one, but maybe two or three different projects. They manage the manpower, the timeline, everything that's involved with it. And then, you know, going away from that is also um, getting master electrician's license and opening up your own company. Um, that's always an option. And then with us, um, there's, there's kind of the side path that, um, that myself and a few others have taken, which is coming to work for the actual um, IDW. Um, in, in our organization, there's organizers, there's business agents, there's um, assistant business managers, business managers, and then, um, you know, it goes higher up all the way up to international president. Um, so, you know, the, there's, there's never, um, the path is never the same for everybody. It, it's all in uh, what you would, what you expect out of it and what you would want out of it. Yeah. And I think one really cool thing about the apprenticeships that you were touching on is, um, that you learn on the job, you learn what you're going to be doing, um, and actually how to do it. Um, you know, just thinking back to like, even when I was in high school, I remember sitting in class and being like, I'm never going to use this ever. Why would I need to do that? Why aren't we learning stuff that we're going to use yes. in our lives? Right. So you train in things that you're going to be doing every day and you're getting paid for it. I mean, yep. I, I, if, if you don't like schooling, um, I think this is a perfect option. Obviously, there's always good information to learn in the books and stuff like that. But having the opportunity to go out, actually use your hands and use your mind and, and actually do that is it, some of the biggest advantages, I think, in construction and um, can really help you out. Because on top of that, you're also learning every single day. I feel like every single day that you go out to a job, you might learn something new. Um, that's only going to help you later on, even if it's with your company or in your own life, um, it's going to help you out. So um, I, I definitely agree with you there that, and I think you did a great job of laying out what it might look like. Um, I like that you said at the end, you know, the world is kind of yours. Once you make it to the top, you kind of get to pick and choose what you want to do. Um, it's hard work to it get really is. It, it pays off. It, it is. It's funny because, um, you know, with our with our local union, um, we carry a, a dues receipt and we call it um, actually this is mine here and we call it our golden ticket. Um, yeah. like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Right. Yeah. So, um, it's the golden ticket. Like once you get your ticket and you're a journeyman, it's completely up to you what you want to do with it. Um, you know, and, and, you know, we encourage everybody to, to travel their own path, you know, because we know not everybody is made to, to, um, you know, continuously work on the, work on the buildings and stuff like that. We need people to go out and estimate the projects and to manage those projects and to be the foreman for those projects and things like that. So we encourage, um, all of our members to, to figure out what their, you know, what their goal is and, and strive for that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there for a construction plan. Um, so I know we're running a little bit short on time. So we have two questions left. I'm kind of going to blend them into one. Okay. So um, I think one big thing about construction that uh, may scare people away, and it did it for me myself um, growing up, you know, there's some misconceptions about construction. So um, on top of that, there are some misconceptions. So why don't, I was wondering if you could rattle some of those off and then also just go into debunking those and say, you know, this is why construction is a good field. And then I think that'd be a great place to kind of end on. So you can kind of get those misconceptions out of the way and also touch on why it's a great industry to be in. In the electrical industry, um, one of the biggest misconceptions is, is that we all wire houses. Um, you know, that's, that's probably the number one misconception guys will say, you know, I'll, I'll meet somebody and they'll say, what do you do for a living? And I'll say, oh, I'm an electrician. And they'll say, oh, can you come take a look at this? Um, the, the truth of the matter is, is I, I do have a uh, residential experience, but that's not really my cup of tea. Um, yeah. You know, the, the industry is so wide and broad um, that, it, you know, I did a little bit of residential, but it's not really my cup of tea. 
Um, I would say overall, one of the, the big things that a lot of people say um, with construction is, is that the probably the biggest myth that I hear is, is that it, it doesn't take a lot of smarts to, to work construction. And to me, that's one of the biggest uh false statements that there is. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, math, there's a lot of uh, safety, there's a lot of um, just rules and regulations that you have to know, um, you know, when, you, when you're working in construction. So it does take uh, to, it does take a lot of brain power to do that. Um, so it's not something where, you know, you can say, oh, you know, I, I, I dropped out of high school and, and I'm going to go into, to, you know, uh, go off and have a successful career. Um, you know, there's, there's a chance that you may, but the, you know, the chances are is, is that you're, you're going to need some of that foundation that you have with, within the schooling to help you out in the construction industry. Um, you know, I also say that, uh, you know, one of the other biggest misconceptions that we have is, is that construction is always booming. Um, you know, you, you go downtown and it's hard to say that, you know, construction is um, a feast or famine thing, but, but the truth of the matter is, is that it is. Um, you know, the, there are a lot of booms that happen and then, you know, work is really busy and everybody's working and then, um, you know, a, a recession happens and all of a sudden all the work falls off. Um, so it is kind of a boomer bust. It does go with, uh, you know, with the economy and things like that. Um, if I was to recommend somebody for, for the construction, you know, I would say, um, do you, do you like working with your hands? Do you like the, uh, the option to build? Do you like the option to, uh, to travel? Do you like working outdoors? That's always a big one. Um, you know, those are things that I, that I always say to these guys. And then, you know, I always leave them with a statement of, um, you know, I understand that construction is not for everybody, but if, if somebody can tell me a career where you can go and you can make $100,000 without going into debt, fifty dollars or $60,000 for a college degree, I'd eat my hat if it's <laughs> construction. Um, yeah. You know, because the, the truth of the matter is, is that construction, it, it, it is a great industry. It pays really well. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't make you, you don't have to have debt to get into it. Um, but you know, there, you definitely have to be smart with it too. And you have to prepare for those rainy days of sorts. Um, but yeah, that, that would definitely be what I would, you know, I, I recommend to anybody who has those thoughts in their mind, if they, if they like to build, if they like being outdoors, if they like a change of scenery, if they don't think that sitting in an office is for them, look into skilled trades. And there's so many skilled trades, um, so many different little branches and things like that, that they can look into that there's just about a home for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think you touched on it and it's just, Another thing is one of my favorite things about it is there's so many opportunities within it. Um, like you touched on, you just said yourself, you know, you can work in houses, you can work on buildings, you can be the guy in the background. Um, you know, I, I know that uh, when I was a kid, I, I used to be really big on making like drawings and plans for like my future house, you know, my dream house or um, whatever it may be, and that could be an architect or that could be a project manager down the road estimator. So there's a lot of different things. Um, and I think, Jeff, you know what? You did a great job of explaining um, what it might take to get into the field, but also all the advantages to it. Um, you know, it, it may not be for everybody, but at the same time, I don't think that you shouldn't give it a, a good look because there's a lot of stuff that is in construction. And I think there are some misconceptions that you touched on when it comes to the industry. And there's a lot to it. And, and I think what, the last thing that you did touch on was you can make a very, very good living um, in this field. So um, Absolutely. With that being said, you know what, Jeff, I think that um, you did a great job today. Um, I definitely appreciate you taking the time to do this. I think this is important work. Um, and I'm sure that um, everybody in the youth program will be, appreciative of you taking time out of your day um, <clears throat> because I know this is a passion of yours. So if you have anything else that you just want to end on, um, absolutely take it away. And uh, I think that'll conclude uh, the panel for today. Yeah. Um, I guess the, the last message that I would send to the, to um, the youth, if they're, if they're in school 
and they're thinking to themselves, um, you know, college is not for me. Don't think that it's a dead end road. Um, skilled trades are, are, are a great opportunity um, to come and, and do these kind of things. And, and like I said, there's so many different facets that we that there's for sure that something that will fit your need. Um, you know, you don't have to go to college if you don't think that that, that you, you're built for college. Um, like I said, I did it myself, and um, I, I did probably a, a semester before I figured out that college just wasn't for me. Um, you know, so don't, don't feel pressured that college is the only path. There's definitely other paths. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, I can't thank you enough, Jeff. Um, you did a great job today. Um, and, uh, uh, I know we'll be talking soon. So thank you again. Well, welcome everyone to the second employer panel discussion. Um, today we have one of my favorite people that I get to work with, um, Kim Kohlhoff over at Vice. Um, we're going to ask her questions um, <clears throat> that are primarily uh, around career pathways and, you know, the steps you can take to uh, achieve what you want in the construction field, how to get there, um, things you might want to know going into it. Um, so we're really excited to have Kim here today. Um, so Kim, I'll let you introduce yourself. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you work, your role, and how you got there. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having me on today. And thank you for you who are watching. Um, my name is Kim Kohlhoff. I'm the HR manager at Vice Electric. I have been here for six years. And um, my role is really to equip um, our employees so that they can go out and do the work in the field. So I, it's interesting because you don't always end up where you think you'll end up when you start school or go into a career. And um, that was true for me. I have a bachelor's degree in business administration. And um, I didn't anticipate ever working in construction, but with connections that I had and opportunities that came along, it was the best decision that I could have made. And I absolutely love it here at Weist. So um, that has been wonderful. Um, as far as some of the specific specifics of my job, um, I do a lot of onboarding. So when we hire people, we bring them on, we train them, we give them the tools that they need not only the specific hand tools, but the, the safety training that they need, um, the clothing that they might need, you know, the safety gear, the um, um, items like that that would be helpful. Um, if they need a vehicle, we have lots of vehicles on the road, so we make yeah. sure that they are trained for that and have um, the tools that they need for that, phones, computer, um, there's a lot of technology involved even in construction that might surprise you, and so we just make sure everybody kind of knows um, how to handle everything and, and do their job well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, you know what's funny is uh, it's kind of like a double whammy here, right? It's because, you know, this is a construction panel, but at the same time, um, your profession is HR. So um, I think that goes back to that there's so many different opportunities in construction that people don't necessarily realize, but you still need an HR even though um, um, you're in construction. So um, I just think that's really cool. So just kind of building off that, you know, um, being in HR, working at Vice, what's your favorite part uh, of your job that you get to do? <laughs> well, I love to help people. That's one of our <laughs> core values is service to others. And so um, that can be played out in many different ways. But in my role, it's um, the equipping that I was mentioning, but also um, the things that go on behind the scenes that are very important to um, make sure that our field employees, those are the people who are out there doing the work. So I'm just really a support person mm -hmm. um, and serving our employees and just making sure that they have what they need to do the job well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then kind of off of what you said about um, the people in the field that are actually doing the work. So what have you seen that have been some of the most important things to consider um, before coming into the construction industry, you know, what have you seen that have made those employees, those really good employees, um, when they come to come to you uh, looking for a job? Yeah, so it's not a job where you need to necessarily come in with a lot of technical abilities to start with. Yeah. If you have some mechanical aptitude, that can be really helpful. Yeah. Um, if you are have a good, strong work ethic, you want to uh, – work hard, the job requires you to work hard, and so right. that is a good attribute to have. Um, 
you know, working in adverse conditions might be something to think about. A lot of um, electrical type of work. Some of it's done inside in finished buildings, but a lot of it's done outside or in buildings that are in process. So you might have exposure to cold, rain, snow, heat, all of those different conditions. So keeping that in mind. Um, some of the other things that are helpful, yeah, working with others, having a good attitude, um, coming to work on time. Those are all really helpful, important things to think about. Um, but we will provide the training needed. Um, so it's really just if you're willing to work hard and um, want to work, then we will, um, yeah, give you what you need to do that. Yeah, and I think um, one thing that your company specifically um, over at Vice does a great job of is setting your employees up for success, right? So um, just kind of <clears throat> going deeper into that, you know, what are some common career paths that you see? I know that you're part of the onboarding process. So let's say someone is an entry level employee and they come on and they say, I want to stay here for 20 years. What might their career path look like? Yeah, and it, it can vary quite a bit, but um, the traditional um, one would start as an apprentice. And so what that means is that someone would come in without that technical training yet, and um, they would work for us full-time. They would get paid their hourly wage. They would mm -hmm. receive all the benefits of full-time employment, and then they would attend apprenticeship school. And so we have agreements with GRCC, KVCC, and MSU um, at this point in time. And so you would take one class per semester. It's usually one evening. Right now it's more virtual. Right. And then um, it's about 15 weeks per semester. So you take one in the fall, one in the winter, you have the summer off. And you do that um, for four years while you're working. And so once you've reached 8,000 hours as an apprentice, you're working under a journeyman or a master electrician the whole time um, when you're on the job, and then you have the school component. Once you reach four years and your 8,000 hours, you can, um, and completed your school component, you can apply to take the journeyman exam. When you do that, your wages go up and you're given more responsibility on the job site and then you can supervise apprentices. And so you kind of continue along that way. If you want to reach master level electrician, you can do that. It's an additional 4,000 hours over time. Um, some people don't choose to go the master electrician role, they get the journeyman exam complete, they start working as a journeyman, and they might take on the job as a foreman after that. So they would oversee job sites and run the entire job and all the people involved from the electrical side of things. Um, someone might stay there for a long time and they may have a great career as, as a foreman for the rest of their life. Some people may choose to, to come into the office and do more of a project management job. Yeah. So they're going to work in the office, they're going to have that customer relationship, and they're going to have that um, relationship with the foreman to make sure that those foremen and the other people on the job site have what they need to, to continue the construction going on on whatever job site they're on. Yeah, and I'm so glad you brought that up because um, during the Construction Industry 101 presentation that uh, we had done before, there's a flow chart and it shows mm -hmm. you know, where you start at the bottom. And there's arrows, you can end up at any single point, you know, just getting in at the ground level. Um, and I think you make a really good point about that, learning on the job, doing the work in the field, and then being able to build that relationship um, with your, your clients down the road or something like that, and knowing and having the knowledge of what's actually going on um, yeah. on the job. So you can understand your employees, so your peers that you're working with, and also understand, you know, what your client wants from you. So I think you hit the nail on the head right there. There's just so many different things that you can do um, from the same or different entry points. So yeah. I think that's uh, one of the coolest things about it. Um, so just moving on, um, are there any like lesser known positions that people might not know of right off the top of their head that maybe you have um, over at Vice or have heard of um, elsewhere? <laughs> yeah, well, you kind of mentioned that we have um, like HR and of course you have finance and IT and all of those critical components of any kind of business out there. Um, a couple that are kind of unique is we have estimators. Um, that's kind of unique to the construction business, I think, in general. 
So you could even become a foreman and work your role into the office as an estimator. And so some people have gone that route, um, which again, as you pointed out, you have great experience of what's going on on the job site. And it just gives you a whole different insight into estimating and what's involved. Um, so that's um, one of the types of jobs. We also um, really encourage people to go into um, automation engineering. Yes. That is a huge field. If you think of Kellogg's or any other processing plant, manufacturing plant along that line, you have robotics that you're working with and all the technology involved. Um, it could be a pharmaceutical company, Perigo or Pfizer, mm -hmm. some other local ones. So automation engineers are a hot commodity because they're really hard to find people with that skill set. And um, I think young people today, that would be a, a great career path to seek out. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's perfect. It's something that you might not hear of, hear of all the time, but it's something that can be, one, financially, financially lucrative, mm -hmm. And two, they're in high demand. So, um, if you're if you're still young, that's something you want to look for. Where there's not a lot of people doing that job, and it's going to be lucrative. So, I think that that makes a lot of sense. So, I just got two more questions for you, um, and um, I think they kind of feed into each other. So, what I've written down here are, you know, I talked about it a lot in my one on one, and you know, what are the misconceptions about construction? that you see and then after you answer that one maybe just tell us why you think you would recommend a career in construction so maybe debunk a myth uh kind of when it comes to that yeah there are a couple of myths out there i think one is that you have to be a male to do the job yes and um females can absolutely um be in construction at all different levels it's not um one of the other myths is that it's mainly manual labor you, you use your brain a lot in construction, right. especially um, in electricity when you're work in the electrical work because you're working with electricity. Mm -hmm. uh, but any job that is in a design build of a building is very specific and detailed and skilled. So a lot of brain power is involved also. Um, but yeah, as far as females, I would highly encourage any young ladies who are thinking of going into any career field related to construction to pursue that. Um, the work itself is not too much physically um, and the spatial um, abilities that I think females have can be really helpful in, in the construction job. Um, and then the other myth that I'll um, I guess say is that some people have the perception that you don't make a lot of money in construction. You can't yes, make it. You hear that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, for some people, college is a great path for them, but for other people who enjoy working with their hands, who like to work with other people in um, community and groups um, as a team, it, it, um, you can provide very well for yourself and your family. Um, you can start out as an apprentice, work your way up into different roles. Um, you would receive all of your benefits and, um, you know, if you have a good company, you can get bonuses as well, which contribute to that. You might have a company vehicle and um, phone and other things that are needed to do the job. Um, so, yeah, we have people who have been at our company for 40 or 45 years, and they have um, made a wonderful career out of um, an electrical position. At our company, so. Yeah, and that is awesome. That's something that Bice should definitely be proud of. Um, and... I know we got to get going, but I think I just want to go back to that um, statement that you made about the hands. Like everything is manual labor, right? Mm -hmm. I would almost say that you use your mind more than your hands. Even if you are um, a laborer out there in the field, you know, there is a problem every single day. And I think if, if you like to do that, if you like uh, figuring out puzzles or riddles or just anything that gets your mind um, moving and you like that, I think construction is a great field. So I'm really, really glad that you touched on that. And I really appreciate you taking the time. So is there anything else that you'd like to add, Kim? Um, and then if not, uh, we really enjoyed having you here today. And I think that this is really informative and, and can only help moving forward. Oh, good. No, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to help um, and to speak to the young people out there um, because it is a great career field. I do think that construction 
is something that we think of as kind of dusty, dirty, away from us, but really what construction is, is building a community. Your hospitals, your medical facilities, your churches, your grocery store, restaurants, um, businesses that are out there, they all need construction workers at all different levels. And so it is critical um, for our community to have good construction workers. And so um, if you want to go out there and contribute and do something that you enjoy and that you're passionate about, I think this would be a great career field. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Well, Kim, uh, I appreciate you coming again. Um, and then also um, we'll add <clears throat> my contact information. If you guys have any questions for Kim, um, you can shoot me an email and I'll, I'll have her answer those for us. Or if you have a question for myself, um, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, if you just want to learn more about the industry, um, I know both of us would be more than willing to help. So um, thank you, everyone. And I hope that this has uh, made you a little bit more interested in, in checking out the construction field. So thank you, everyone. Have a good day.